What's up, everyone? Welcome to Investing Bros. Merry Christmas. I hope every one of you guys are uh, having a fantastic uh, long weekend with your loved ones. But in this video, I want to talk to you guys about investing, about the greatest investment you'll make here in 2024. And no, it's not Solana, which is still pumping. I just looked uh, when I made this video. I think we had just crossed 120 uh, recently, at least. Uh, oh, look, there's a deer. Uh, we also we're not talking about Cardano. We're not talking about Bitcoin. We're not talking about Ethereum. Uh, and, you know, there's another saying a lot of people are going to say uh, the best thing you can invest in is yourself. And this kind of goes kind of goes in line with that. But it's not even really that one. I'm going to go and spoil it up front, but stay tuned for the entire video. Uh, I want to make sure you guys hear what I have to say. I don't get to talk about this too often. Uh, and I don't talk about this too often, but I want to talk about it today. The, the number one thing you guys can invest in in this next year is joy. Joy is going to be key for you guys to invest in because guess what? There will be green days. There will be red days. There will be moments where you're on the top of the mountain and there are days where you're in the valley, the pit, and you're thinking about giving up. The thing that will separate you and keep you focused and keep you aligned into your investing is joy. Now, I want to make sure, I un make sure you guys understand I'm not saying happiness. I'm not saying excitement. I'm not saying good feelings. Let me tell you why. Happiness, I do believe, is one of the biggest problems with uh, people's mental health today. And that sounds weird because every single parent, uh, when they hear about their child, they're like, oh, I just want my child to be happy. I just want my child to be happy. I just want them to be happy. When you talk about your spouse, like, oh, they make me so happy. Well, what happens when your child stops feeling happy? What happens when your spouse stops feeling happy? Happiness is great. I'm not discouraging it. But the, the constant chasing of just trying to be happy, 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 happy. In crypto, that constant chase of trying to make money and be happy with the money you're making, make a good trade to pick the right coin. Have we, not, have we not all heard stories of people who seem to have it all? They had the amazing wife or the amazing husband. They had amazing kids. They had money more than what they knew what to do with. And yet they still struggled to make it mentally. One of the greatest examples I would think is, is Robin Williams. I mean, I grew up, my dad loved Robin Williams. So I grew up watching a lot of Robin Williams stuff. One of the funniest people I think to ever walk the earth. One of the people that probably brought the most smiles to people's faces and yet, he ended his own life. Was it money problems? No. Robin Williams had no money problems. Was it uh, he didn't have enough people in his life that loved him? No, there's lots of people who loved him. The biggest thing that causes people to make decisions similar to Robin Williams is there's no joy. And, and I, if you're wondering at this point, Tim, what is joy? If joy is not happiness, if joy is not excitement, what is joy? Well, there's a couple things that go into joy. The first thing is gratitude, being grateful. You need to invest in being grateful. There's so many people who have things going well for them. And there's so many people who do not have things going well for them. But the only thing you can control, sometimes you can't control if your life is going perfectly or if your life is going poorly. But you do have the control to choose to focus on the things that you do have rather than the things you don't have and be grateful. And I'm telling you right now, guys, this crypto bull market is going to make a lot of people a lot of money. But I can tell you right now, if where you are currently in life at the time of watching this video is not good enough for you. If you're not grateful for the things you have right now, you'll never be grateful for the things you get in the future. If it's not good enough for you now, it's not going to be good enough for you when you 10x, 20x, 30x your money because there's a problem within your brain that you struggle to be grateful. So the first thing when we're talking about joy, learn to be grateful, learn how to have gratitude. The second thing is learn to be patient. Part of being joyful is being patient. In crypto, I... I, I can't tell you enough about this. This takes like, listen, most of you guys who are watching this video have probably been in. Some of you bought at the top of the bull market and you've just ridden this whole wave down. Be patient. The profits will come. Some of you have bought more recently and you're wanting more and more and more. Be patient. The profits will come. But also just learn to have a, a, a presence of patience with anything in your life. A lot of times people, when they're going through hardships, they give up right before everything was about to turn out good. That's just very, very common. People have gone through the ringer. They ring, they go, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. And then it's like, you know what? I give up. I'm done. I'm finished. They give up. And then it seems like the minute they give up, 
that's when everything goes good. I mean, that's what the classic, you know, buy the top, sell the bottom type of thing happens. You know, people, they'll buy the top and they're like, all right, we're going down. It's okay. I'm, I'm going to ride this down. But then it gets to a point where they just can't hold off anymore. They sell, they, they take their losses. And then it seems like they sell right at that perfect bottom. And if they had just been a little more patient, they would have been able to withstand it all. But you have to have joy to have that patience. The third thing that I would say you have to have is selflessness. Part of joy is being selfless. Listen, a lot of you guys make a lot of money. And if you guys want to buy Lambos and boats and houses, whatever, that's great. That's what I want to do. I want to buy my family a house, but I'm not doing it because of me. I'm doing it because I have a wife and a child and, you know, hopefully in the future, future children on the way. And I'm not in this to make money so that Tim Warren can have fun in life and do whatever he wants to do. No, I'm wanting to leave generational wealth to my children, to my wife. The reason I got into crypto is not for me, it's for them. And then ultimately also, I wanna see the people around me do well. I wanna see every single one of you guys in the Investing Bros community do well. I wanna be here with you to celebrate your wins, to talk through the losses. How do we learn from them? How do we grow from them? I love crypto. I love what it does for me. But ultimately, one of the greatest things about it is the community. And part of having joy is thinking about other people more than you think about yourself. In fact, I don't know if you know this, but I already talked about one of them. When, when someone comes in with depression and if, if there's a doctor who just wants to give them pills, you know what, they just take pills. I think that's another problem in America, but that's not what this video is about. But, but holistic health, holistic uh, healing of depression, of lack of joy, there's two things they tell them to do. One, to go serve other people to be selfless. In fact, one of the, the things they prescribe is go serve at a shelter, go serve at an orphanage or something. And it, fo it forces you to take your mind off of yourself and think about other people. And ultimately that is one of the greatest things of joy because when you stop thinking about yourself and you think about other people, there's just something chemically that goes on in your brain that makes you actually not happy, joyful. You know, even the other one, gratitude, they, they literally say, that, you know, they've done uh, studies on brain cells. The part of your brain that triggers when you're uh, anxious is the same part of your brain that triggers when you're thankful and they can't trigger at the same time. So if you're in a spirit of anxiety, you cannot be thankful. You cannot be grateful. But if you're in a spirit of gratefulness and you're thankful, you cannot be anxious, right? So those are, those are the first three. The last one, what is joy? Joy is peace. A peace that no matter what is happening in your life, you're going to be okay. That's the real difference. Happiness comes and goes. Happiness, you'll have a moment high and then a moment low, but you don't have peace. Peace is whether I'm on the mountaintop or I'm in the valley, I'm going to be okay. Now, a lot of you guys might be hearing this saying, all right, Tim, this sounds good on paper. Grateful, uh, be grateful, be thankful, you know, uh, think of other people, you know, all <laughs> It's really easy to say, it's really hard to do. In fact, in the world right now, there's so many things that would drive us towards being anxious. We have wars going on. Uh, here, I'm here in the United States, no war happening currently. I mean, technically some people are gonna say there's trying to war inside, the, inside of our own country amongst our people, but ultimately, I don't live in a place where I'm worried about my life. There are people in the world right now that are worried about their life. Um, you know, we're worried about our money, our economy, despite the fact that the numbers keep coming out saying everything's okay, we all know are smarter than that. We know, we know the economy's in trouble. We know there's a lot of problems going on right now. So how do you, in a season of chaos, have peace? This is the part that I don't get to talk a lot about. Now, I say I don't get to talk about a lot of it. I just don't talk a lot about it. And I'm not going to use this video to talk about this. This isn't my, my new platform. I'm just going to start just ripping at people here and there. But the reason why I feel like I have joy, the reason I am grateful, the reason I am selfless, the reason I am, you know, even at moments happy and I'm peaceful and I'm, and I'm, uh, I have all these things going for me is not because of anything I've done. In fact, every time I've focused on myself in my life, every time I've tried to take my own things to, in my own hands and control it myself are the times I've found myself at my most bottom, my most depressed, my most problematic. But there's one thing that I have found in this world that has given me what I call joy. And it's, it's to a place where no matter what's happening in my life, I look for the good in things and I have a peace about everything that happens. And that is Jesus. You know, today's Christmas. Ultimately, this holiday started in a celebration of the birth of Christ. Um, you know, it's become other things. And I think it's awesome. The concept of giving each other gifts and, and being with loved ones is awesome. But ultimately, if you want to know the roots of this holiday that we celebrate worldwide, it's the birth 
of Jesus. But why? Why do we celebrate the birth of Jesus? You know, the story is that Jesus is the son of God, that God saw us. He saw that we were wicked people. You want to talk about why the world's so bad? It's because we're so bad. Uh, no one watching this video is a good person. I'm not a good person. You guys aren't a good person. We might do good things at times, but ultimately we all catch ourselves in places where we've done horrible things to other people. We're bad people. We're bad people. But God loved us so much that he sent his son in the form of a baby. He didn't send him as this ringing king on a horse coming to slaughter the enemies. He sent him as a baby to live the same life you and I lived. But it wasn't to show off because that's the other thing. is Jesus came, lived a perfect life, one that you and I can't have lived. We've all lied. We've all stolen. We've all hated people. We've all done things to other people that have hurt them. Jesus came and lived a perfect life, not to show off, but to live the perfect life so that when he eventually went to his death, a perfect man who deserved no evil, when he went to his death, he did it because he loved you and me and he took our place in the things that we deserved. He took our place so that we could have the potential of joy amongst all our pain, amongst all our anxiety, amongst all of our sin and things that we deserve, the bad things that happened to us, we deserve those things, right? He came to take those away by dying in our place. And, and here's the thing about Jesus. Listen, I've seen a lot of people with happiness. I've seen a lot of people even with joy. But the one thing about Jesus that I find different than any other belief system in the world is no matter what the other belief system is, there's always something you have to do. And what I mean by that is you have to become a good person. You have to stop doing this. You have to start doing that. You have to yada, 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 yada. And don't get me wrong. The goal is that every person becomes a good person and starts doing good things and stops doing bad things, right? But in every other belief system, your salvation, your saving grace is you. You have to be a good person. You have to do X. You have to do Y. You have to do Z. And I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm, I think a lot of you can write with me. We try to be good but we, all, we always fall short every single day. I still to this day, I feel like I get on a rhythm of doing good, 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 and then I'll fall short. I'll become selfish. I'll do something that I know that I really should not do. And you look back in hindsight, you're like, why did I do that? If my salvation, if my future is dependent upon my actions, guys, I am in trouble. You're the same. If your future is dependent upon your actions, you're in trouble. But the difference of Jesus and any other religion out there is Jesus came to do everything for us. My salvation and my joy is not based off of my actions. It's based off of his. How can I be peaceful? How can I be grateful? How can I be you know, patient and kind? It's because I know that no matter what I do, I'm loved. I have been saved. And my salvation is not rooted in my doings, but in his doings. That's why I have joy. I don't have joy because I'm a good person. I don't have joy because I have a lot of money. I don't have joy because I have loving family members because all of that could leave me tomorrow. I have joy because no matter what happens in the future, mountaintops or bottoms of valleys, I have Jesus. I have a salvation that lasts for eternity. And in that joy and in that, that lifting of weight off my shoulders, through me, he does good things. Because I've given my life over to him and he is my Lord. He's my savior. He's my king. I do everything I do to serve him. That's what allows me to just sit back and have joy, not anxiety, I can be grateful for everything he does. No matter what's happening in my life, I can be grateful for him. I can have peace. I can have patience because I know the time will come where I'll get to meet him face to face and I'll live a life of, of luxury, of eternity, of, of just happiness and joy and peace and greatness. And it's all because of him. And I was gonna, I'm going to kind of wrap it up here. I'm going to wrap it right here. I'm not going to go into craziness here. And, and also, in case you guys are wondering, Tim, is this going to become a new thing? Are you guys going to start preaching every single show? No, I'm not. And I want to tell you why. I love Jesus and I want you to know Jesus too. But I also believe this is a platform where I can help you guys. I can help people around the world. There's so many people who cannot even focus on the eternal things like Jesus because they're so worried about these earthly things like money, like relationships. And you know what? The goal is to get us all to where we don't have to worry about money. The goal is to get us to where that is not the thing that makes us or breaks us. But until we can, uh, we can put our eyes completely on Jesus... We're here to serve and to care for people. When Jesus was here, he didn't come and just shove the gospel down people's throats. He didn't come and just ring in everyone's faces that he's perfect and they're sinners. He came and he served and he dealt with their human needs. He fed the hungry. He healed the weak. He healed the sick. He was kind to those who had no relationships, no friendships, no family whatsoever. And then after building that relationship and caring for their earthly needs, that is when he offered them what he really wanted to bring to them. And that is an eternal life of joy.
of peace, of selflessness, something that would heal their sins and cause them to actually to have a future and a hope. And you know, I, that's what I've always said about crypto. I believe for the first time in a long time, we have hope for our financial future. But even if that financial future goes away, guys, you can take my Bitcoin, you can take my Ethereum, the government can throw me in prison, but no one can ever take away my future. And that future is in Jesus Christ. And if you want to know more about that, hit me up in the DMs. If you don't, that's completely fine. By the way, guys, we're not, this, this channel is about crypto. I love Jesus. I will never deny Jesus, but I'm here. Me and Tisham are both here to serve people, to help them take care of their financial needs so that that is no longer an excuse for them to not see the real joy and the real beauty in front of them. And that's Jesus Christ. Guys, that's all I have for you in this video. Merry Christmas to every single one of you guys. I will see you tomorrow. We'll be back to our normally scheduled content. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic weekend. God bless.